So I was out here yesterday looking for a pike. I'm just at the city pond here. I want to do a pike catch and cook and fighting the wind and fighting the weeds. It's just chock full of weeds right now and they won't let you throw a canoe in there, go figure, because you know, people don't have canoe skills in the city. So, and then I realized uh, I had some leftover pike from the Wilderness Living Challenge. So what am I doing out here fishing for dirty pike? So, um, kind of regrouped, went back home, thought about it. And then, uh, while I was out here yesterday, I noticed there was a few wild edibles coming into season. So today I'm going to grab some. I'm out for cattail behind me. There's going to be some nice shoots coming up. And uh, I found some mint. Uh, so that's going to be good, I think, for flavoring the pike. We'll give that a try. And I've also got some nettle coming up here. Some <clears throat> we're going to do a reboot on the nettle. I tried that before and I kind of burn it. So we're going to try that again. Right now I'm going to drive guys some cattail. And then I uh, might hit another farm for some burdock. We'll see, and I'm uh, gonna put this all together and make myself a wilderness meal. Ask yourself, who out there is doing wild edible meals? You might see a person grab a wild edible here and there, but who's putting meals together? Think about that. And I want you to think about how difficult it is to put meals together, and uh, try to think about all the different areas and combining in order to put a meal together. So these are kind of cool. This part here is nice and soft and tender, completely edible. And they slide out like almost like they want you to. You just grab the center leaves, pull them out, and they come straight up. This you can eat raw, but we're going to cook these something special. So instead of carrying all these around all over the place, these big long stalks, the upper part here is totally useless to me, but the lower down here is edible. So instead of carrying the stalk around, I'm just going to cut them off here and then I'm just going to carry with me the part that I want to eat, which is the white part. This is similar to a blade of grass. and. Uh, you know, if you pull a blade of grass up, you can eat the white part at the bottom. It's nice and tender, but of course it's full of cellulose. It's questionable amounts of carbohydrates in there, but there are, there's quite a bit. Uh, enough to make it worthwhile, but again, you're digesting a lot of cellulose in order to make that a go. Not like our refined carbohydrates where corn or rice or flour. So anyway, we're going to cut these up now and uh, make them a little bit more portable.
Okay, new location. I'm out at a spot where I've collected burdock before, burdock root. So the thing about burdock root is you want to grab them on uh, first year plants. This is a second year plant. It's got a stalk. So behind me there's a bunch here. I've actually got some burdock on my leg. Burdock the seeds. But back in here there's some small burdock. There's also some garlic mustard here which I'm going to use as a seasoning. So what I need to do is dig down. Uh, the idea with the burdock is not to dig, is uh, not to break off the lower part of the root. We want to, we want to keep the lowest, the growing portion at the bottom. We don't want the top, it's going to be hollow and woody. All right, let's dig one of these up. So we've got a bit of a spring spread here. What I managed to collect throughout the seasons and uh, today I did quite a bit. Uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown. So we have the cattail uh, shoots, I have black walnut that I've been uh, saving and rationing from last fall. There's wild mint, which will go with uh, a seasoning. I'm gonna try to experiment with a little bit of seasoning. Uh, we talked about uh, using pike and, and uh, eating the skin and one of the things we didn't do in the Wilderness Living Challenge is actually where that pike came from. Uh, last day, I haven't eaten it for a whole year, been uh, you know, a little bit put off by the pike, so I decided that I, uh, I would take a little bit of a break. So this is about how long it took me to get over just eating pike. Um, I've got some maple sugar. That's from actually this property here. It's collected. Uh, I've got um, sunflower uh, nut butter. Sunflower seed nut butter, uh, some wild leek leaves. I've uh, I've already pickled the bulbs, so uh, all we have left is the leaves to try to make something out of this. I've packed in some butter, uh, corn meal, and some sunflower seeds as well. So we're gonna work that into it, uh, following along the Native American theme, and they did use a lot of sunflower and nut butters to flavor things. So. 
we'll have to stay and watch as uh, as things unfold today we'll show you how I'm going to use them I've also got nettle is coming up right now it's just about the right height for harvesting I have some pin cherry syrup that's uh, similar to the choke cherry uh, jam except you don't use a pectin so it ends up being a little bit runnier and we'll use that for uh, flavoring some kind of dessert that we'll come up with so you can imagine these are the ingredients that you might have in a typical uh, wilderness kind of living situation and what you might do with it maple syrup again from this property so uh, that's the stage before the maple sugar and last we have some uh, mustard garlic and that's an invasive weed species you can literally find it just about everywhere so i'm going to work together oh the burdock root as well that's my carbohydrate along with the cattails so let's see what we can do we're going to get a fire going here at my uh in my spot we made this spot a while ago with my son and uh it's not going to be a campground because it's too wet so it's just going to end up being a outdoor cook spot so let's put some of these things together and, and uh, see if we can you know fill our bellies with the food of the land so ask yourself when you're when you're having your next meal where, where is it coming from you know as far as living on the land and living off the land that's one of the things we have to do it's a continual search for energy so where where was your next meal going to come from
So one of the first dishes I'm gonna make, or I'm gonna start anyways, the dessert. And that requires boiling or simmering the sunflower seeds for about an hour. So we're gonna boil that back into a paste. So this one's gonna be our our nettle dish. So it calls, uh, the actual recipe calls for scallions. I don't know what a scallion is or where to find one in the woods. So instead of using scallions, which is an onion, I'm gonna use what I do have, which is leeks, leek leaves anyway. So that's going to act as my onion. I'm going to throw these in the dish to saute. I think it asks for one scallion, so we're going to be aggressive here. Because why not? Actually, you might not want to put too much in there because I have to mix nut butter in there too and I don't want to use my nut butter for everything so we're going to add a little bit of oil we're going to cheat we use uh, sunflower seed oil if we took the effort to make it instead we're just going to saute that in olive oil we found the leak so that's going to be our scallion now Next we add our nut butter in there. And that's sunflower seeds. I've made this in another video. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of water to help it steam. So the cattail will be pretty easy. We're just gonna cut it up, put it in a pot of water, boil for a while to help soften it. Although they're they're pretty soft right now. Some of the chewy ones will just never be they'll never be right, but it'll just add to the to the meal. I don't want to put too much bulk in there because I'm gonna be using maple syrup and I wanna be able to uh, actually enjoy the maple syrup instead of having it go to waste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out a way at taking away the the most uh, the harder bits the woodier bits and uh, boil it in water and then once it's fully cooked and I'm satisfied then I'll add the maple syrup to it So for the pike, we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to keep the skin on. Now, I did have a, a plan to scale them. You can see they're getting pretty slimy.
I'm just going against the against the scales to pop them all off. I'm just going to move this pan because I don't want the scales in the pan. Actually, I don't want it in my spice either. I don't know too many people who scale their pike. I usually just fillet them. But if you're living in the wild and you need fat, one of the places you can get them is the skin. It would be preferable to do this with uh, as a whole fish rather than as a fillet. I'm obviously going to get some of my wood table in there and I'm probably not going to end up getting all the f scales off either. You can see what a nuisance it is to get these scales off. They're quite small. Okay, we've got a variety of things on the go now. Uh, I want to make my fish topping before I put the fish on. So I'm going to use nut butter. And hopefully this is going to work out here. So that's the sunflower seed. And uh, these are mint leaves. Smells like mint for sure. So what we're going to do is going to grab a few of those and we're just going to tear them up and we're going to add them into the nut butter and we're just going to let it do its thing here as a spread to add on to the fish. That was one of our other problems in the Wilderness Living Challenge is we just kept eating the same types of foods over and over and over again. Now this may or may not work because I'm running out of pots. So here's our, our bone, our descaled pike. So another fish seasoning is the garlic mustard. This stuff is already wilting. I'm just going to grab a few leaves. Again, this is a weed species. It, uh, it's pretty much everywhere. You can see we've got some heat here, so that's good. Just gonna use a few of the leaves. You, can, you can't really over harvest this stuff. Essentially, if you want any other plants other than mustard garlic, then you should actually get rid of them. So we're going to try to keep these separate. These are two different fish flavorings. I'm going to add some oil. I think we're used to eating mint on in candy or uh, toothpaste. But we'll see. It's one of those cultural things.
Alright, let's give this a taste. I think it's gonna be interesting on the mint. The minty fish. Yeah, minty fork. Ah, it does, it does taste like mint, that's for sure. Okay, so minty fish. It's not bad. It's kind of, it's not like mint, like toothpaste mint, it's more mint like, like ice cream mint. That's pretty good. All right, so this is the garlic, garlic mustard fish. I do like garlic. It's okay. I think it could have been chopped up finer though. And the pike's actually not bad. It's not even really pikey, it's more like boiled pike without the fishiness. Which is kind of surprising. Now for the nettle. This is nettle with leek leaves, one leek bulb, and nut butter. Sunflower seed nut butter. It's pretty good. Not my favorite. But but it's edible. It's a little bit overdone as I typically do with my nettle. I always burn it. When I say it's burn, it's just a little a little bit overdone, but it's edible, kind of like a spinach. I could definitely eat it. And I think my favorite is actually the mint fish. And the um, scale pike is just fine. Nothing wrong with that. Mint fish, who knew? All right, I'm going to finish this off. We have Still cattails left. I'm gonna make something special with that, more of a desserty, desserty carbohydrate. And I also have an actual dessert with sunflower seeds that I'm gonna make, another Native American concoction. And what bums me out the most is I was gonna get lemon balm again and make that lemon balm tea, which is absolutely fantastic with maple sugar that I made with Clint. Fantastic, but I forgot to bring the lemon balm so I have water. Although I may make a cedar tea with some maple sugar and see how that turns out. Natives did do, use a lot of their maple sugar to enhance drinks. It was an easy way to get some carbohydrates and sugars in their, their, into their diet and keep their energy up. They didn't often eat just cedar tea by itself, although they did as a remedy to, to scurvy because it has the maple or the uh, vitamin C in it. Cheers. So I was asked by one of the people watching the video to give him a shout out. He said when he doesn't catch fish, he's, it makes him sad. I'm not sure what that means, bud. But uh, I did say I'd give you a shout out next time I caught a fish. But I might not catch a fish for a while. So, Xavier, this is your shout out, buddy. Thanks for watching the channel. You said you said I was your favorite YouTuber. I find that hard to believe. But if that's the case, if it's not the case, no worries, buddy. Keep your chin up. Life gets better, bud. It's better when you're eating fish, too. So here's our cattail. That's gonna go, I've drained it out. We're gonna put it back on the fire with some maple syrup. This is maple syrup that I prepared this spring from this actual property. So we're gonna let that soak in.
cattail spears and maple syrup that was a good one I was eating a few off camera if you get a wrong one it's just cellulose that's kind of like candy I see some of these stringy ones you can eat it but it's probably gonna go through your hole but there's carbohydrates in there sugars in it not just from the maple syrup but naturally here's one that's probably gonna be fairly woody Yeah, the whole outside of it is no good. But you can, even once they get bigger, you can chew on them. And spit out the not good parts. But I would say if you're very careful, you can make this into a, something that's very good. These little ones are fantastic. There's still a lot more than I can eat. And cattails can be used for uh, thickeners and soup as well. In which case you don't have to eat the actual rind or husk or whatever you want to call it. And then just chewing on it, spitting out the the hard outer part. Taste some mint off my fork. The mint pike was good, but then after a while, you start to not want to eat it anymore. So this is going to be our dessert. These sunflower seeds have been boiling for about an hour. Well, longer than an hour. Now I need it to cool off so I can actually work with it. What I want to do is make a dough. So I need to be able to crush it. Which is hard to do when it's boiling hot. Alright, still a little bit lumpy but we're gonna work with it. We're gonna add some cornmeal to kind of thicken it up. We're aiming for a dough here. And then some maple syrup. Who knows how much? Let me just guess. I'm going to add some nut butter just to thicken it. This isn't necessary, but this is this is just fine, fine ground sunflower seeds. That's going to help bind it a little bit more. Probably a little bit more cornmeal. Just to get it sticky. You want to be able to make it into a cake. Obviously this would be a lot better if <clears throat> those nuts were mashed down a little bit more or even into even into a nut butter. And it's gonna be hard to stick together <clears throat> without an egg, but We'll do our best. Not sure where natives would have got eggs. Maybe they would have stole them from geese. Think if I was hungry, I might steal it from a goose too. It's our burdock root. You see, it kind of looks like a carrot.
Tastes like practically nothing. A little bit potato-like. A cross between a, a potato and a potato. What did I say? A cross between a carrot and a potato. By themselves, they're whatever. But that'd be great for as a thickener in a soup with some meat. So like I expected, it didn't hold together. Got no egg, got no gluten, no wheat. I should have broken down the sunflower seeds more, but I've been cooking all day. It's really good though. And I'm absolutely stuffed. I didn't eat any of the burdock. Pile of burdock left. Couldn't eat all the fish. Couldn't eat all all the nettle. Jeez, couldn't eat anything. But when it comes to sweets at the end of a meal, there's always more room. This pin cherry syrup. It's not jam or jelly, it's syrup. It's very sweet. So we're gonna put some on there. And we're gonna put some maple syrup on the other half. So there's a few additions to this meal that helped it make it work. The butter and the oil is one of them. I cheated fairly liberally, but that can be remedied through bear fat, moose fat, which is something that can be rendered and stored throughout the season. So, as far as living off the land, it's possible, but you have to make do, you have to take advantage of every season. If you miss a season, you miss, miss the burdock, you um, miss the cattail, you miss the maple syrup. Those are all additions that you don't have throughout the season that are very seasonal. So if you don't get them when they're out, you miss them, and then you have to do without them until they show up next year. And pinchers are from the fall. And they may not have been stored as a jam or jelly, the syrup as a liquid, because it tends to spoil. They would have been dried out and stored as a sugar or a dried berry. And the natives use agriculture. You know, as far as the hunter-gatherer society, they didn't do it much after the ex extirpation ex and extinction of the big mastodons and the giant beavers and the woolly mammoth, those things were big boom animals that they could get. We can't get those anymore. Wow, it's really good with the syrup. So over time they had to switch over to agriculture. That's where we get the corn come into play and the sunflower seeds and Jerusalem artichoke, tomatoes, squash, beans, and those are all staple items. Easily stored, dried, cured even the meat. So the more I experiment with wilderness living and especially eating from the wild, the more clear the picture starts to become of how people actually did it. This is really good, really good. I think this is a meal on its own. And there's one other comment that really got me laughing. Ariel, she mentioned some things about Jeremy and I. I'm not going to go there. She wanted us to eat pike naked. Again, weird comment, but it made me laugh. So Ariel, some shirtless pike eating for you. But it's not going to happen naked. <laughs>